What's up, painting friends? I'm in Corishon State Park in Estero, Florida, and today I thought I would just paint some of the plants here. I haven't done a tropical plant painting tutorial in a while, so I'm just going to pick some of these plants here and start to make some little illustrations of them with my soft-bodied acrylic paints. All right, guys, for this painting tutorial, I'm just going to be picking random plants here at Corishon State Park, and for the first one, I'm going to look at this guy right here. Just like a fan palm type of palm plant. We're going to use Vivid Lime Green. It's going to be pretty good. And some Yellow Medium Azo. Some Raw Umber. Some Mars Black. Ultramarine Blue. Sky blue violet or light blue violet. Also going to use sap green. Some phthalo green. Also going to use some magenta. Phthalo blue. Yellow oxide. Titanium white. Burnt Sienna. We'll also use Cadmium Free Red Light. Cadmium Free Yellow Medium. For my brushes on this one, we're just going to start with this little guy. It's just a flat tipped, like three eighths of an inch, maybe like between a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch. I'm just going to dip my brush in the water. Take some of my burnt umber. And I'm going to like kind of keep things in sections. So we'll work in this bottom section for this plant here. And it has a little fan, like stem that kind of comes up to the fan part. And then the actual shape, like just really roughly, loosely kind of sketching with the acrylic paint here. It kind of makes like this big fan shape. And I really watered down the paint there, so it's really thin and I can paint over that later. But that gives us the basic shape. So we have the point where the fan meets the stem and then kind of comes up. And these thin little branches that all come out from that stem there. So I'm holding the brush in a way that's getting those nice, long, stem-like strokes of the brush. And they're really spiky on the edges. So now we've got that shape. I'm going to take some of my green, my lime green, and my sap green, blend those together, take some yellow medium, cadmium yellow medium, or cadmium free yellow medium. <laughs> And I want that to get cooler, so I'm going to add some phthalo green and some ultramarine blue to make it less vibrant, but still keep that cooler feel. And a little bit of burnt umber in there too. Let's take some more yellow. So now I'm getting more of that actual color, close to the color we see on the actual plant there. It might even be a little more yellow and brown, but I'm just gonna go with this. So we're gonna start there. I'm gonna press pretty tough with the brush and then just pick up at the top. Like that. So first I just kind of sketched out the shape to give me an idea of how this plant looks. Now I'm going in with the brushwork with the right color. They start to make a little bit of a U at the bottom there. Got one that kind of stuck out there. And for this side, so they're all kind of touching until it kind of makes like an another fan here, a more steep one where they're all still touching and then the branches break apart. So again, I'm pressing 
more firmly and getting a thicker application of paint and then picking up the brush and quickly making that brush stroke there. Okay, and then we have the little point here where it meets the base, like that. And then, where all these little stems meet there, I'm gonna clean off my brush and switch to a liner brush. And we're just gonna use our yellow Azo. And we've got, first of all, we've got a little bit of yellow Azo in between all the points where these branches meet each other. And then we've got like a yellowish whitish line. So I'm gonna take some yellow and some white, dip it in the water. And if you wanna go super detailed, each one has a line down the center of each branch. This has to be a nice thin line, has to stay centered. Coming down. Just some brown, culture, some um, burnt umber and burnt sienna right here above the point where these stems branches all meet the stem and we could take just some like sap green and darken up just do a couple fan lines here to darken up some of these sections where they're coming in You definitely want to show that they're all coming out from the center point. That's important. Okay. Good. And then you could just make the background dark or like I see behind me or you could make it like a light blue if you just want to use your blue violet. This is usually I would paint the background first, uh, but for this one I didn't want to cover up what I started out with wanted you guys to be able to see what I was working on there. Okay, so there's a really quick and simple way to do a fan palm there. Now let's try... Let's go for the Spanish moss next. So right up here, if you look right there, we have a lot of Spanish moss just hanging from that tree. So I think that's what I'm going to work on next. I'm going to get a little bit of that tree stem and we can't see much of the tree branches. They're all kind of covered in different plants and moss. So we're just going to do the moss and a little bit of that tree trunk. I'm just going to start with my larger semi-round edged brush. Still like a flat brush, that's so not a round brush. Then we're going to take some umber with some ultramarine blue and some magenta. A little bit of ochre. And we'll start with that. We'll just go with So obviously this stuff is not all to scale. This was much smaller than this trunk is gonna be. No more umber and blue.
Gonna take some black with my ultramarine blue. Just kind of darken this up in here. We've got shadow. Take some white, some ochre, and some sienna. And some more white and magenta. And I'm just trying to make like kind of something that looks a little bit more like tree bark there. And then we put that brush back. I'm gonna take out my liner brush. All right, so we got the trunk. Let's do. Start with the shadows first. So we're gonna start with just umber and black and sienna. And I'm just gonna take my liner brush and start to make some. Little crisscrossy kind of scribbles, honestly. So I'm holding the brush so it's just just that little bit is touching. I'm not pressing too hard onto the canvas. And then we're gonna do a little more kind of coming down here. So you want it to follow a pattern, so it's kind of coming down in these little strings, but you wanna scribble the brush. You can pick it up, you can just keep it on pressed the whole time. Kind of pull it down and make sure that your scribble is getting thinner as you keep going down farther and farther. So we're just starting with those shadows first, and then we're gonna take our lighter color, with the, which is white, a little magenta, a little black, some ochre, and a little bit of light blue. And you're just gonna go scribble over the dark stuff. You can make it even more white if you want. And you don't want to completely cover up the darker stuff that you had there. Just enough to make it look like you have like a highlight or some sections that aren't in shadow. Don't use pure white because that'll stand out too much. Now you guys can kind of see a quick, easy way to paint Spanish moss. And let's look a little more at these other plants. What else do we want to paint? How about we do... Uh, I have a feeling this guy here is like not a native plant. This, this one. But uh, let's go with that. <laughs> let's paint one of those. So again, I'm going to start with my flat tip brush. Gonna get the shape, mixing my lime green with my sap green and my ultramarine blue. We'll use a little bit of phthalo blue. 
and some brown. A little more ultramarine blue. And this shape just kind of looks like a heart. Comes up, out, and along, down. And it's got a little curl at the bottom. I'm just going to use some sap green and fill in the center. Trying to keep my edges nice and crisp. And we can switch to this longer bristled brush here. So we're starting really dark on this one and then we're going to build up some highlights. I guess I should make two so that it doesn't look strange just having one by itself there. Put a smaller one at like another angle here. And then we have our yellow azo, some white and some ochre. Let's take a little bit of cadmium red and more yellow. And that kind of forms a little bit of a boundary here. Can't even use more yellow. Got a line. Got a little highlight here. Not a line, just a highlight. So I'm going to brighten up this section a little. Let it blend into the other section. Same thing here, like the bottom part's just a little bit lighter. So let's take our larger brush and just take some yellow and lime and a little bit of cadmium red. Just go over this a little bit, brighten it up just a little. It's a little too dark. Kind of even out the paint on there too. That's better. All right. Now switching to the liner brush, we're going to take that yellow with the red and white. And I'm taking my liner brush and I'm just going to make a line all the way down. And then it's kind of like a pumpkin where it has these angled lines. Like that. And then it's got a bunch of little ones that just kind of connect the whole thing. You know, in between each little one there's like little sections here. I made it a little bit brighter than it actually is. We can lighten up sections of this plant here. And then they've just got like a vine, like kind of a reddish brown vine that connects them.
I think I just take a little more lime green if you want to brighten that bottom part up again. Okay, so now you kind of see how those look. I'm gonna paint one of these next, but I also want to get the trunk. This is what the trunk looks like. So for this tree, I started with the stump using warmer color tones than I did for the mossy tree. I used more burnt sienna here, mixed with white, yellow, maybe a hint of magenta too. And once I got that base color, I started to block in the shadows. We have these diamond shaped shadows. This tree trunk reminds me a lot of a pineapple with the way that the limbs kind of come out from that central base trunk. So this is like the shadowy, uh, barky section in between each limb. So I'm just putting a little diamond shape here for each of those, mostly just using burnt umber. Going up to the top, it's getting a little bit wider, like closer to the top. And then I just kind of blotch down some spots with the burnt umber. Now I'm switching to that small flat tip brush and I'm blending a color for the branches that are kind of sticking out from that central trunk. It's really cool the way these trees grow. You can see where the old limbs were that are farther down and that's what I'm working on painting here and as it keeps growing up and up the limbs or the branches at the very top still have all of their leaves and the palm on them but the ones at the bottom kind of break off and just have this pointy protective structure around the trunk. So we're using white with some of my sky blue violet, a little magenta, a little bit of ochre to get that like light beigey gray color and I'm just making those angles coming out from diagonally from that central base section kind of working around the shadowy parts that I put down first and starting to make those branch little cutoff sections a little longer as we're moving up the trunk. And then I just put some fanning across the top there. Now we can work on adding some green and some of the living sections to this tree. So first we're just gonna put a little bit more brown in there just to show a few more of the stems sticking up, the branches. And then I'm blending some sap green with some umber and carrying out some branches, extending them even farther out. Creating some fans. Very quickly, I could have made these more detailed by using a liner brush here, but I just kept using my flat tip brush just to give you the basic general shape of the tree. And they create these fan shapes similar to the first one that we painted. All kind of coming out from one central point. The wind has bent some of them over so they don't keep that perfect fan structure. And I just start with that darker like umber with sap green color first and then we'll go back and start to add some highlights and some yellows and some more browns to these fan palm part of the tree later. It's good to switch up your colors and make some sections a little darker too so that it doesn't look flat and you'll make your tree look a little more round and have some actual depth to it. And I was working very quickly here just using my flat tip brush to create those general fan shapes, continuing to add more little highlights and shadows to keep building up that depth, but I didn't go into too much detail here. Just wanted to show you guys a quick way to get the basic shape and colors for these different tropical plants.
All right guys, so this was not like a full painting tutorial for like, here's what we're gonna make on this canvas panel. This was just to show you different ways to paint tropical plants that I am seeing in front of me in southwestern Florida. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful for your painting at home. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below this video. And if you have any recommendations for future painting tutorials, just let me know in the comments as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching again and have a great day and happy new year. Bye-bye.